It's become a thing where as a mom, but our kids come first now, but realizing that, okay, my self-care comes first. And we all know the analogy on an airplane where you're supposed to put on your mask first. And we don't think about it that way when it comes to how we treat ourselves. I think that's huge when moms come in realizing that, okay, this is my self-care time. This is my moment. say, um, like, I know a lot of moms struggle with, you know, after having a baby, getting back into the gym or getting into the gym in the first place, take us through your journey and balancing being a mom, a new mom at that. And then starting this new fitness routine. Like, how did you balance that? In the mornings, waking up, start my day off with prayer. I need to get my mind right before anything. Um, I've learned that my mindset really does direct most of my day. Um, and how I'm feeling. And um, so what I do is I always have a calendar on Sundays and I try and plan my weeks out. And if I have an accountability partner with me that knows what's going on, when am I gonna be at the gym? Um, when am I gonna be with the kids? And I really had to tell myself as a mom, I can't be here every single night, but I had to t give myself some space and time for myself and for my kids as well. So I really had to divvy up those days. So choosing two or three days out of the week that I'm gonna have my personal workout. But really having a schedule, having a plan, and then that accountability and knowing your goals. Because if you know your goals and you write them down and you tell someone, that really will hold you accountable. It has to start up here first. People, when they decide they want to lose weight or go to the gym, they get so overwhelmed with everything. And they're like, oh my gosh, I have to do all these, make all these changes. But it's so true. Just like change one small thing, change your mindset. So, and I'm sure like, so your kids are at the age where they're probably getting more aware of like the gym and I'm sure they come to the gym. So like, how do you guys as parents instill like healthy lifestyle to them or explain what the gym is and I'll keep them active as well. One of the best things about this place has been the kids. And I need to add a quick little nugget here because when we started off on Theodore Street, my husband did not want parents to bring their kids. And I was like, heck no, they're bringing their kids because we have kids. Get the big guys up in here. And I'm like, no, like I'm bringing a different crowd and we need the kids to come. Um, so that has been really awesome. We call them our Valor Kids. And it has been so beautiful to see these kids watching their parents work out. And I'm gonna take you over to the kids area that we have right now. But having a routine, your kids see that. And they need to have a routine for themselves. They need to say, oh, in the morning we wake up, we have a healthy breakfast, I need to have some water. This is our kids area that we have over here and they watch their parents work out. Um, so we have their learning show on, they can color or a quick movie as they watch their parents work out over here. You include them in your routine so they learn those healthy habits. I mean, it's so true. It's like kids want to do what their parents do. Or they, they mimic what their parents do a lot of times. So if their parents are healthy and instilling these yeah. healthy lifestyles, then sooner or later, they're gonna pick it up too. And it's just the reality of our daily diet is we have an excess of sugars, fats, like salt, alcohol, and then we have deficiencies of all the vitamins and the nutrients and you know everything that we need in a meal because of the fast food places that are just, you know, right around the corner and it's easy access. Um, but that's one thing that we found as we're in the process of building nutrition clubs, we're trying to get these kind of clubs all around our city just to build healthy habits, good nutrition. Speaking about like healthy habits and different like transformations, what's been like the best transformation that you have witnessed so far? I really cannot pinpoint one but I can tell you this, like the top five are, you know, they've dropped a tremendous amount of weight, probably 40 or more pounds. We've had people drop, you know, 65 pounds, 100 pounds, but it's really the, the, 
the people that have a transformation in their mind, the people that come in here feeling like dirt and they have no friends and they have no connection, um, but then they come in here and they find a purpose and they find a family, they find a home and they build the healthy habits and they start losing weight. The ones that have built their self-confidence and the physical transformation, those are the ones hands down, I'm just like, I love what I do. It's just such an amazing transformation from the inside out. And I truly believe that's where it comes from. And it's hard for some, you know, we're on social media all the time, but people don't really see the heart and soul of what goes on in here. And we have a lot of inspirational talks with people and we get down to the nitty gritty, like what's really going on at home. And, you know, this is a safe place to share some people, like we're not gonna pull it out of them, but you know, real stuff that goes on in the mind and just seeing that mind, body, and soul transformation. Those are the biggest ones. Marissa, if you want me to drop a name, I love Marissa. Um, just a beautiful woman who started making better choices for herself and for her family, for her kids, um, when she started to realize her worth. It's just so inspiring. I mean, anyone that sees the transformation is gonna get inspired in some way. And I love yeah. that you keep referring to Trans transforming their mind and their soul and their body. It's not just like, hey, let's lose this weight. It's like, let's figure out what's going on and then, you know, change our frame of mind and, you know, move forward. Yes. So what is the best part about what you do? The best part about this whole thing is building relationships. It's the impact that is being brought from it. And it's not about us and it's about the lives that are being changed. That's really the best thing about it. Um, we've had a client that has gotten off their diabetes medication and has lost weight and just like the healthy habits that she's instilled in her diet now have decreased her meds and she's healthy and she's happy and it's the relationships of all the people that come in smiling every day and excited you know just the relationships that you're able to build with all different people in different walks of life that's really the best thing about this so what do you hope to accomplish down the line with sharing your story and with helping others at House of Baylor? Um, so we really hope to have duplication of nutrition clubs here. And this year we have um, over 60 people that are on our team of what we call the Valor Squad. That's where that name kind of came from, the business side of it. Um, so in Herbalife, you have an organization and you start to build other distributors on your team. So our team is a little over 60 people that are um, you know, distributing products either to their friends and family, coworkers, just their own sphere of influence. And um, those, some of those distributors are looking to have their own nutrition clubs, healthy active lifestyle um, places in their cities and in their towns. We're looking to have at least 10 by the end of the year of these nutrition clubs and healthy active lifestyle places. We have shake parties where we just teach good nutrition, healthy habits, and the same thing like excesses and deficiencies and people's diets and what you really need. We kind of talked about um, all the relationships you've built. So what about like your personal transformation? Like what has been the best part about that? And then like, where's your next personal fitness goals after this? The biggest thing for me and what I try and portray through my social media the most is just being free with whoever you are and whatever stage that you're at and um, forgiving yourself for things that maybe have happened in the past or for how you ate yesterday just being free with who you are and knowing that God forgives and there's always possibility and there's always room for growth. I think people stay stuck in their mind so much just because of things that have happened in the past and they don't think they're worth it. Our mindsets really limit us in that space. So getting to a point where I've just been able to journal out my thoughts and just completely own who I am. And I had to tell myself, okay, yes, I'm a teacher, I'm a health coach, I'm a mother, I'm a friend, I'm a daughter. Just all the things that you are and truly own it and know that you can go into everything confidently being who you are. Um, but my next result that I'm super excited about is getting the six pack, girl. I'm trying to get a six pack up in here. And my husband, he has like, I don't know, it's like an eight pack, something going on. And I'm like, what the heck? How do you get your abs to like pop out like that? And I've been eating well and it doesn't work for me. What's going on? 
So I've been increasing my workouts and um, staying on my nutrition plan, but I'm trying to get my six pack here. So then you're also a teacher. You said you teach eighth grade. Do you instill like um, any of your like healthy like gym habits or nutrition habits into your students and how do they like perceive that or how do they take that? In the classroom, they already know I'm walking in there with my tea. This is my energy tea here, guys. And then I have a healthy meal shake, which is protein based, obviously. Something that I tell them is protein actually gives you energy and it fuels your body during the day. You need protein. So Mrs. McCollum has a shake and a tea every morning. Oh, she's got her 21 vitamins and minerals. Like they're like, what? Okay. And it makes them think, what did I have for breakfast? Like what's going on here? So we did have that talk in the beginning of the year. And if I feel like crap, sometimes it might have to do with what I'm eating, right? Or like if I don't have energy and you need carbs in a diet, that's another misconception. You do need carbohydrates to give yourself energy, fuel your body. So it's like, if I'm not eating at lunch, shoot, I'm not gonna have energy for the rest of the day. Um, I do do a nutrition section with my track and um, field girls. So maybe like once during the season, we'll talk about good nutrition and how you should be having dinner after practices and eating the right way.